Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a mono red control deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring four copies of Koth, Fire of Resistance. The new four mana Planeswalker starts out at four loyalty, and we can immediately use the minus three ability to deal damage to a creature equal to the number of mountains we control. And that's why we're playing 24 basic mountains, so we're guaranteed four damage on turn four if we minus Koth. Then the plus two ability gets up to six loyalty right away and lets us find a basic mountain, so a great way to keep hitting our land drops. So Koth definitely at its best in a control strategy where we definitely want to keep hitting our land drops to get up to eight or nine mana. And then eventually the minus seven ultimate, which we actually get to pretty quickly thanks to the plus two ability. We can get an emblem saying whenever a mountain enters the battlefield under our control, the emblem deals four damage to any target. So that can also be game winning. Then the rest of our deck is very similar as you may recognize to the Monoret control deck I featured about a month ago. So we have a lot of artifact synergy, including four copies of the Might Stone and Weak Stone as a way to not only ramp, but when it enters either draw two cards or give a creature minus five minus five. And then the Power Stone mana we can use to cast some of our expensive artifacts or activate abilities such as maybe drawing with a Bankbuster, which we can do the same turn we play Might Stone and Weak Stone. Bankbuster another great source of card advantage for a mono red deck. And the Might Stone giving a creature minus five minus five is also very valuable now that Frexen Obliterator and the new Vindicator are in standard, since those can soak up damage from red burn spells and either redirect them or make us sacrifice a bunch of permanents. So having clean answers to those creatures is also very important. And then we can also take care of them with either a Cityscape Leveler at 8 mana, an 8 8 Trampler that when we cast it or whenever it attacks can destroy up to one target non-land permanent, and its controller against a tapped Power Stone in return can also be unearthed for 8 mana. At 9 mana there's a Skitterbeam Battalion, 4 4 Trample Haste, making two tokens with the same stats, and finally the Portal to Phyrexia to make the opponent sacrifice three creatures, and every turn we also get to reanimate a creature from any graveyard. And then our cheap interaction includes Voltage Surge, can deal 2 damage or 4 damage if we sack an artifact, at instant speed, a Braid to deal 3 damage to a creature or destroy an artifact, and then 2 copies of the new Filigree, Silex, which is similar to Ratchet Bomb, can sacrifice it destroying all tokens right away, or we can slowly tick it up and then sacrifice it and destroy all permanents with the same mana value as the number of counters on Silex. And then at 3 mana there's Celestus for a bit of ramp, we've got Brotherhoods and to deal 3 to each creature and Planeswalker, so an important board wipe against creature strategies, can also maybe destroy artifacts with mana value 3 or less, can be a bit of a nombo with Koth since it also damages Planeswalkers, but it's also a nice answer to opposing Planeswalkers, so I'll take it. And then two copies of Visions of Phyrexia, which used to be the main centerpiece of the previous build, but now that we have Koth at 4 mana I'm only running two copies, still a great source of card advantage, and can also make Power Stones end of turn the turn we play it to help us ramp towards our expensive artifacts, or if we decline to cast something from exile, can also play at lands if we'd like. And then just 24 basic mountains, so no utility lands in the mana base, which we're giving up because we're playing four copies of Koth now, so we'll see if that trade-off is worth it. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and seems pretty solid. Just need to hit two more land drops, and then Koth will take care of the rest. Going on blue black. Alright, Bangbuster hopefully can help us hit our land drops. Opponent counters, but a braid can take care of the opponent's Bangbuster. Fair is fair. Looks like they're on Esper. So between Koth and Visions, they're both valuable to resolve. I think we play Koth first, since Visions is a bit more difficult for the opponent to take out, I think. Visions resolves, get our Power Stone. And let the card advantage begin. Knights to draw two. They must have drawn into a counter spell in this last turn, another make disappear. It's too bad. 
At least we still have our visions. Which finds a Silex and a Bankbuster. So we'll Bankbuster, see what we draw. Unless we want to play around another Make Disappear. Seems kind of unlikely. Okay. Sorin, not too much of a problem. Silex can deal with the token, although I guess that means losing the Power Stones. So it points plusing instead anyway. So can take that out with maybe a Battalion. Fine to take this up. Could also Voltage Surge here down to 3 loyalty. Sure. Not be humiliated again. So a 6, 7, 8. Not quite enough for 9 mana battalion. So in that case, do we settle for 5? Can play Celestus plus 5 mana battalion. Okay. Depopulate was to be expected. Take up Silex, since we can maybe eventually deal 10 damage with it, I guess. And draw with a Bankbuster. And another Visions is nice. If I don't play the Mountain, then I'll get two Power Stones end of turn, which may be better. Also possible I should have held on to one in case of a farewell exiling enchantments as well. Okay, definitely gonna play 9 mana battalion. And land can go. Battalion resolves. Smash for 12. And a Wandering Emperor can deal with one of the tokens. The actual battalion, I guess, is more valuable. So, could sack it to Voltage Surge, so it's still in the graveyard for a potential portal to Phyrexia to get it back. And we can draw with the Bankbuster end of turn. Alright, let's hope to dodge farewell. Bono needs a land for it. Which enters tapped. And then I guess we'll start uh, getting up to 10 counters for Silex. Cut down on the token, so may not be able to crew Bankbuster for lethal. Okay. So activate Celestus, see if we can find a haste creature or a way to crew Bankbuster. Another Brotherhood's end. So attack for eight. Put them to one, and then kind of expecting a farewell next turn. Another Emperor is fine. You started this fight, but I'm going to... Put it at seven, and then I guess I'll just uh, deal with a Planeswalker now. I'm never done for good. And yep, yeah, there's the farewell. Okay, everything's exiled, so that happens. Hoping to top deck some of our finishers. Should maybe keep a mountain or two in hand for Koth. 
Although I still want to be able to resolve a portal through a MIG disappear. Emperor number three. Have to look in the exile pile. We must protect the people. Can Brotherhood send to take care of both? I have got new moves to teach you. And a bang buster we can abrade. Opponent draws on the way out. Nightstone's nice. So we'll start by drawing. Okay, Bangbuster works with a Power Stone mana. They could counter with a Make Disappear, but. At least I'll have to sacrifice their token for it. And that seems to be happening, so at last make disappear gone. And we can still draw with a bank buster. And next turn likely... Oh, did not mean to pay for that. Okay, so missed out on a bank buster draw step. Hopefully it doesn't cost us. Guards. Wedding announcements. That's fine. So let's clean things up. And now we can draw. And there's a portal. Okay, could try and resolve portal. Although the creatures are lacking, so I guess we'll hang on to it. Just draw with the Might Stone. And still haven't found a Koth, which is surprising with only 19 cards left. Draw with Bankbuster. There's Koth at long last. So Silex can deal with the tokens. While Koth gets the remaining mountains. Not a ton left. We still have double leveler, portal, couple Koths, and another bank buster. So, a couple more win conditions. I guess that's one of the downsides of playing uh, Koth is that we have all mountains instead of some creature lands in the mana base. The fairy, that's fine. If they make a token, we've got our Silex to handle it. So our opponent draws. I'll let Koth take the hit so we can get the other token with Silex end of turn. Okay, Koth will keep plussing. Since it doesn't damage Planeswalkers. Is our land. And then now we draw with Bankbuster. And then we want a Silex before getting the pilot from Bankbuster. Okay. Yeah, I think I start holding Mountains. Demand an answer for Koth. If not, the emblem should carry us to victory. Soaring City to bounce. We'll stall for time. Cut down the token. And the fairy draws. They are getting kind of close to an ultimate. Although not a big deal. We've got 13 cards remaining. The decking starts becoming a bit of a concern here. Kaito's ninja we can answer with portal to Phyrexia. Even there. 
back up course. Have to play mountain so we don't discard to hand size. Okay. So any creatures to get back with portals? Still none. Bangbuster will abrade. <laughs> There's no secret I can't uncover. Ferry on 12 loyalty, so can ultimate now. Would love to just draw a cityscape leveler to destroy the ferry. Alright, there we go. So Koth keeps plussing. Last mountain. Kill the ferry, crew bankbuster to attack Kaito. Unless we want to leave a blocker back to protect Koth, which may be reasonable too. If they kill Leveler, we can unearth it and just kill the opponent next turn. Thanks. I'll be taking that now. This card's a go for the throat. Not great against us. Another Bankbuster. So we've got nine cards left. And another farewell. That's too bad. So artifacts and graveyards. So it does not deal with the human token, which can attack Koth here. So no emblem after all. Mind stone to draw, I guess. Six cards left. Koth can minus play another Koth. Mirrodin, lend me your flame. Find leveler, okay. Leveler destroys Kaito. Maybe I should have waited to keep up Voltage Surge to sacrifice a leveler if they try and exile it somehow. But that's okay. Oh, there will be next time. Announcement number three. Number four. Opponent's gonna make a bunch more 1 1s. Although between Voltage Surge and Koth Minus, we should be able to clear a path. Four cards left, so minus Koth. Play and minus. When this war is over, we will finally rest. This and then the we can play Celestus if we'd like. Don't know if I need to draw with the Bankbuster anymore. But by attacking and destroying a wedding festivity, we can finish off a token with Voltage Surge. And then we should trample for enough. Did we finally get there? Alright, what a game. All the way down to four cards in library, never got our Koth emblem, but we still won the game, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and seems reasonable. Could use a bit more removal, especially against Mono Red. 
Koth is decent. So if we find a fourth land, Koth will help us hit future land drops. Scrap War Kamut. Yeah, that's probably worth taking out here. Next turn, play Bankbuster. A Braid could now hit the Etching. Although, if we're about to miss a land drop, Bankbuster can help us draw one. So it's a close call. I think I should still prioritize protecting my life total. So I'll keep up the Braid. Warfare, alright. We'll take out Etching. Now we do have a way to remove the Warfare with our Silex, although it's gonna take a while. So, could take a lot of damage in the meantime. And then, of course, Leveler, once we get to 8 mana, might be the more straightforward answer. Another Kumano. Deals 2 damage now. Probably gonna play Visions first to actually start ramping towards Leveler, whereas Koth just helps us hit our land drops. Okay, Mindstone is an excellent way to ramp towards Leveler. So, maybe playing Koth, get a Mountain, let the opponents deal a bunch of damage to Koth, which pans our life total, and then Mightstone gets us to 7 mana, so we'd still have to draw a land, although Bankbuster can activate with a Mightstone out. So maybe it's still worth it to play Koth to basically pad our life total here. I'm assuming Koth is gonna die. Although if we get to activate it once again, we're guaranteed a leveler on turn 6. So for now, Swiss Spear. And another Warfare, ouch. So that deals 5, this deals 4. But at least they would have to send both creatures at Koth. Which they do. And then now Mightstone kills Swiss Spear. Can still draw with the Bankbuster. And hope we get to play a leveler next turn. And they can even get back a Phoenix Chick, that's quite nice. So yeah, that's probably gonna be the final nail here. Four more damage. Brotherhood's End is an answer to the board, but we're still dead to any haste creature or burn spell. I guess Voltage Surge can still maybe snipe a creature. Opponent's likely gonna find a way to finish us off before we deal 20 damage, however, but this is a good start. And then Voltage Surge, I guess, can kill the Mutts if they bring it back. Draw with a Bank Buster, might as well do it now. Play another one. Okay, let's see if we're dead. And Earth Mutts. Discard and draw. Okay, so far so good. And now an end of festivities, quite literally, will end the game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and seems decent. Just need to draw a couple lands early on. And our Bankbuster can help with that. If we're up against Mono White Aggro, Brotherhood's End's gonna be great. Companion points in a slightly different direction. So let's draw, hope to hit a land. Perfect. Companion in a mono white deck could imply Elishnorn. 
which we can answer with Koth. Although, I guess we'll uh, take out a companion now so we don't have to discard to hand size. Missing land drops is never great, especially when we're trying to cast some 9 mana spells. Uh oh, Vindicator? Yeah, that's pretty tough for Monorad to deal with, so Mindstone is going to be our answer. Alright, land is good. And then we'll have to discard. And maybe an Abrade can go. Companion's fine. Take five. Okay, let's take out Vindicator while we can. And then the Bankbuster gets to attack. Opponent chumps. And now we have six mana for artifacts. Could play another Mightstone and draw. Sunset Revelry makes a couple 1-1s. One okay, so we've got options. If I draw with Mightstone, I can hopefully hit a land drop, or I can just play a Visions of Phyrexia, so we don't have to discard to hand size, and Bankbuster can keep attacking. Sure. Eventually, we'll wipe the board, so we don't have to worry about the tokens. Visions will make an extra power stone, so then we're up to 7 mana for artifacts. So getting closer to 9. Opponent takes it for now. Ooh, Loron can blow up our... Visions, perhaps, yep. That was good. Tempted to keep a Mindstone to answer another Vindicator, if that shows up. Alright, land was good. So, Crew Bank Buster and then Brotherhood's End to wipe the board. I think that's it for now. Could play a 5 mana battalion, which may have been worth it actually, after wiping the board just to apply a bit more pressure. Although now we're getting close to a 9 mana battalion. Well, let's just keep up removal. Farewell, hits all artifacts, ouch. So that also would have uh, hit our battalion, sadly. Okay. We'll kill the token end of turn. And then we have to rebuild. Battalion can just hit them for 6 here, put them to 6. Or I can play Visions, or even Mightstone to draw. So we've got a couple options for sure. Visions keeps up a braid. And then let's say we make a Power Stone. Next turn, 7 with a land 8, so not quite 9 mana battalion territory. So maybe it's just 5 mana battalion. And then we've got a few removal spells to clear a path. Okay, Ravelry back up to 10. And a Wandering Emperor as well. Okay, so we're pretty far from killing them now. Although a second battalion gets kind of close. I think I like Visions plus a Braid. Can attack Emperor, make them block with both, and then Trample means we'll still finish off the Planeswalker. Our swords 
We'll cross again. So we're starting to hit our stride. Opponent does still have a lot of cards in hand. Sanctuary Warden, definitely a good one. Although, Mightstone is an answer. If it weren't for the festivity, I guess. So, what's the plan now? I guess try and set up our portal to Phyrexia. We can play Celestus. And get that going. I guess I should attack here. If we get to remove the last shield counter, we can just use Koth to deal with the Warden. And then now we're in a spot to set up our portal, as well as maybe a lethal battalion. Bankbuster is acceptable. And announcement makes another token. So now our opponent could crew the Bankbuster and keep the Warden alive through Portal. Does a Braid change anything? So we have 9, 10 mana. Not quite enough to Portal plus a Braid. Portal still seems like the best play overall though. And we'll see if they crew the Bankbuster. Does mean they would lose it as well. So our opponent lets the creatures go. And with her opponent at 12, this battalion's looking good. Hopefully dodge a farewell so we can bring back the opponent's Sanctuary Warden. And yep, there's a farewell sadly, all artifacts gone. Mountain's good. So... Play the one from Exile since Power Stones are less reliable than Mountains at this stage. So that's going to force a chump and put the opponent to two. So hopefully we can dodge a third farewell. They've already played their fair share of revelries. Depopulate, I guess, makes sense. So now Mightstone can draw. Brotherhood's End deals with a token, but let's see what we draw off Mindstone first. A Koth. Koth is nice. And our opponent explodes. Alright, I'll take it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems fine. Bangbuster into a Brotherhood's End if we're up against a more aggressive creature deck. And then hopefully we can draw a few extra cards here. Although Mono Blue might be able to counter turn to Bankbuster. Looks like Blue Green maybe Poison instead. Okay. At least this is a way to get rid of a Rot Priest without targeting it. Take two for now. And there's Ivy. Okay, so this Brotherhood's End should be effective. Nice two for one. If we miss our land drop, we can draw with the Bankbuster. Still have a Voltage Surge available. There's a Rock Priest. Although I imagine our opponent has some protection spells in place. That being said, we could Brotherhood's Ends and Voltage Surge. Force them to have two protection spells. Alright, that worked. Pass it back. And our opponent explodes. Alright, so some early removal, good enough to defeat the poison deck. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems reasonable. Up against turn one scamp, so red aggro. Okay. 
Our life total is going to be under some immediate pressure. Although at least no 2-drop, which is nice to see. Hang on to a braid in case there's a scary 3-drop. Warfare is worth responding to before they get to tamp the scamp with oil counter on it. And then Celestus can eventually gain a bit of life as well. Another warfare? Uh oh. So the burn spells are a real concern. Call to get some mountain. And then hope to pick up a might stone and weak stone next turn, which can ramp towards our 8 and 9 mana artifacts. Play with fire to scry, deals for damage. Another play with fire and upkeep to scry before drawing. So we're at 10. And Kumano is 3 damage, also deals 3 to Koth. Gonna plus first and then activate Celestus. Okay, so still two turns away from Leveler. Flame Stoker. We can take out before they get to draw four. So probably just minus Koth on it, since I don't think an emblem is a realistic win condition. Although, that being said, we can go up to seven next turn emblem already. Although, I'll keep the Flame Stoker in play, which is too much of a liability. So yeah, let's just minus and then play Visions, which will immediately make a Power Stone. I could Brotherhood's End just to switch it back to Daytime, but that means either losing Celestus or Koth. Keep our Koth around. Scamp. Okay, that's three damage here. So between Portal and Leveler, I guess Leveler makes more sense since it can actually close out the game. And then we should go after a Scamp, which can deal damage even without attacking. Although at this point most burn spells uh, would be lethal anyway. Etching attacks. Kami's Flare. Okay, I guess it actually exiles a leveler. Was still a forced block. Okay, so Koth keeps plussing. Play a portal. And that still keeps up a braid for a haste creature at least. Mountain's fine. Get back. I guess uh, we don't have any creatures, so... Flame Stoker's probably better. Found a Bank Buster. So play that. Can draw. Play a Silex, which can eventually deal with the Warfares. It's gonna switch back to Daytime, gaining us one life. And then we'll pass. Mountain, okay. So we get to Emblem Koth now. Take up Silex. And, uh... Take our draw, get a Scamp. Probably a Brotherhood's End. So Emblem Koth. Might want to just play Mountain from Hand to get the extra Power Stone. 
Nightstone can draw. Try and find Battalion, and there it is. Played for 9 mana. Let's see, this is 12, 13, 14, 2 damage short. If I could crew the Bankbuster, we would have lethal, but don't have any cheap creatures to do so. So yeah, I think attack, and then we're at the mercy of the opponent's draw step. If they find a burn spell, they still kill us. Okay. Last possible draw step. And the festivities, that's three damage. Leaves us at one. Wow, what a game. And our opponent explodes. What a nail biter here against Monorad. So at least we managed to win one game against them and to ranking up in the process as well. So yeah, quite happy with how this Monored control deck turned out. Very similar to the Monored deck I featured about a month ago, just slotting in Koth and removing some of the utility lands in the mana base to make sure we have as many mountains as possible. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.